UN 영어 뉴스 State of the Union 2023 5 Takeaways from Biden's Speech 3 Testy Moments During the State of the Union Joe Biden delivered an animated and at times combative State of the Union speech at a pivotal moment for his presidency. It came as he is poised to launch a re-election campaign and is dealing with Republicans controlling one chamber of Congress for the first time. Here are five key takeaways from his evening in the spotlight, speaking to a sharply divided Congress and an audience of tens of millions of Americans. It was America first foreign policy last. The Chinese surveillance balloon was a huge story in America over the weekend, but it received barely a mention from the president in the bottom third of his speech. As we made clear last week, if China threatens our sovereignty, we'll act to protect our country, he said, and we did. And that was it for the balloon talk. The other big foreign policy story of the past year, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, also received scant attention. The president welcomed Ukraine's ambassador to the U.S seated in the gallery and heralded allied support for the nation, but he did not use the opportunity to call for new aid to the war torn nation. The president made no mention whatsoever of the recent earthquake in Syria and Turkey and the humanitarian crisis that is unfolding. Instead, the president's focus was dominated by domestic concerns. There is a saying that Americans only care about foreign policy when U.S. soldiers are dying overseas. Joe Biden, in this speech at least, seems to have taken that to heart. To finish the job on economy, what Americans do care about, according to public opinion surveys, is the economy and they by and large believe the nation is still struggling if the nation is bouncing back they are not feeling it yet mr biden's speech was a high profile effort to change their minds and in doing so boost their his chances of re-election he spoke about record low unemployment he said that inflation and high energy prices, which have been a lead weight on his approval ratings for the past 18 months, are now declining. And he discussed all the ways his legislative accomplishments to date will help improve the nation's industrial base. Then he pivoted to a refrain he would use again and again, that it was time to finish the job and pass new legislation to boost the economy. It was an effort to cast eyes toward the future and offer a vision he can offer to Americans wondering what an 80-year-old president has left in the tank. 3. Biden tried to play nice with the Republicans. But if Mr. Biden wants to finish the job in this political environment, he will need Republican help. The new face behind Joe Biden in this State of the Union address was Kevin McCarthy, the Republican Speaker of the House of Representatives, and he served as a fairly accurate barometer of Mr. Biden's attempts to convince Republicans that they could be his partners in job finishing. When the president boasted 
about the bipartisan accomplishments during his first three years in office. Mr. McCarthy politically crept and even cracked an occasional smile. The president noted cooperation on infrastructure spending, high-tech investment in microchip manufacturing, military aid to Ukraine, federal protection for gay marriage, and electoral reform, among other topics. We are often told that Democrats and Republicans can't work together, he said. But over these past two years, we proved the cynics and the naysayers wrong. Those naysayers are predicting that not much will get done of substance in the coming year. As Republicans and Democrats crash over policy priorities, but for at least for a few minutes, the President and the Speaker played nice and offered hope that gloomy predictions might be wrong. For he also picked a fight and got heckled. It didn't take long for all that to come crashing down, however, when Mr. Biden turned his attention to raising the debt limit. On that topic, Mr. Biden and the House Republicans are engaging in a high-stakes game of chicken with the U.S. economy at stake, and the President, in his speech, showed no sign of blinking and may have poked his Republican counterparts in the eyes. Referencing Republican demands to link a debt limit increase to spending cuts, Mr. Biden noted that no president added more to the national debt than his predecessor, Donald Trump. Republicans responded to that line with hoots of derision. derision. He then tried to link Republican demands on the debt limit to some conservative proposals to cut Social Security and Medicare, the popular government-run retirement and health insurance programs. Mr. McCarthy scolded and the Republicans howled in anger toward the back of the chamber. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who had earlier paraded around the halls of Congress with a white balloon, stood and shouted that the president was a liar. Earlier in the day, the House Speaker had reportedly cautioned his fellow Republicans to hold their tongues and observe congressional decorum. It was, it turns out, a futile effort and a telling indication of the partisan animosity that courses through this Congress. Five invited guests provided emotional moments. Like every State of the Union address, Mr. Biden's speech also included a laundry list of proposals, most of which have little chance of becoming law. Two of them, force reform and new gun control legislation, were represented in the chamber by his guests in the gallery. The parents of Taya Nicholson and the hero from the Mon Monterey Park mass shooting in California. He spoke emotionally about the need for progress on these two issues, pointing to his guests to drive home his points. All of us in the chamber, we need to rise to this moment, he said. We can't turn away. Introducing the parents of Mr. Nicholson, who died after being beaten by five police officers in Memphis, the president implored lawmakers to overhaul policy. Tyre's mother, Robagen Wells, and stepfather Rodney Wells stood when Mr. Biden mentioned them during his address. 
As many of you personally know, there are no words to describe the heartache of losing a child. But imagine, imagine if you lost that child at the hands of the law. Mr. Biden said it. The reality, however, is that neither police reform nor gun control has much chance of success. There is a better chance Congress will tackle the junk fees the president railed against, including bank surcharges, resort fees, and airline seating charges. American politicians may not be able to agree on how to address police brutality and gun violence, but no one likes ticket master convenience charges.